Is that it? Yes. That's yours? Yes. Okay. What's your middle name? Is it Tom or like Teddy? <laughs> it's Tom. There's something on the table. Is it Tom? Yes. Okay. All right. Now, I got another one for Joshua. Hey. And that for connectivity, Kaylin. <sighs> Gavin's not here. He's virtual. Yeah, I'm busy trying. Here's, uh, I think this says. Okay, Joshua. Josh, I think. I can't tell if it's Joshua or Josh. Josh, come on. Well, okay. this is yours. You gave me a, a test correction, is that right? Is yes. that yours? I emailed you test corrections. No, that's probably Josh. Okay, that's pretty great. Right right right. right.
go from a positive charge to no charge. Yes. It gains electrons, right? Oh. It's got a positive charge, you have electrons that get rid of the positive charge. So this has gained electrons. It's being reduced. Barium has no charge here. Now it has a charge. How did it get a positive charge? By losing electrons. It gave up electrons. And so barium lost the electrons. It's being oxidized. So you should be able to tell what's being oxidized and what's being reduced. Uh, and the easy way to remember is the Leo of the line goes GER. So Leo tells you when you're oxidized, you lose electrons when you're being oxidized. And the stuff that's gaining electrons is being reduced. The redox reactions can be very, very extremely complex to balance. They have a whole method of going through to learn how to balance them which at some point I'll be teaching you guys because it's it can be a lot of fun. It's real challenging for like, I did it, I bounced I got the right and it's bounced correctly because it can really be messy. Uh, it's a several step process and we'll worry about it now. Uh, so anyway, that's what we're doing this week. We're going to be doing, uh, well, I'll, I'll leave this up. This week, that's what we're doing. We're taking, yeah, this is uh, the lab we're doing today, which is five, double replacement. You can see very good nitrogen are exchanging places, and I found it. Now, how can I know that this is going to be aqueous? We'll dissolve the solution. Is it from the barium or the nitrate? Sorry, did you say the end? How can you tell that the barium nitrate is going to be soluble in water? It will dissolve in water. It's aqueous. What is it? Very much nitrate that tells nitrate you. Is nitrate is always. Nitrate, nitrate, when it combines with any substance, it's a soluble one. Always. 100%. Which one of these tells you that it's going to be soluble? The sodium or the solvate? The sodium. The alkalite metals, the first column, all of them, always, always soluble. Sulfate, often soluble. Sulfide is usually not, but sodium sulfide is soluble because sodium is. Now, always soluble, always soluble, so no surprise that this is soluble. Usually not soluble, sometimes soluble, so that is not soluble. That's what we put in there to show it doesn't, it's not soluble. As for solid, because it's going to precipitate out. And that's what you expect to happen in our reaction day to see that happen. So that's, anyway, that's the idea. Um, and so it's not, oxidation reduction is just looking to next week, that's all. I just wanted to point that out. Okay, let's we'll spend more time with that next week. Um, that's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be doing more than one. That's just an example. You have calcium nitrate. Is that going to be soluble or not? Calcium. Copper nitrate, nickel nitrate, and zinc nitrate. They're all soluble because of the nitrate. <laughs> but when they react with something else, that's not going to be necessarily soluble. You want to predict based on knowing that sulfides are almost never soluble and the nitrates and sodium compounds and, and potassium, anything in the first column, meaning it's an alkaline metal, uh, they're all always soluble. You made a predict like we did here, which one's soluble and which one isn't. So all the ones you put in are going to be soluble to start. But when you mix them up, you're going to find a precipitate sometimes. Can you predict that? That's your hypothesis. So as you go through the lab and you do this, um, to see what's happening, you got potassium iodide, potassium hydroxide. Hydroxide is usually not soluble. Um, and sodium uh, acetate and sodium sulfate. But the sodium in front, so all of these are soluble because they're sodium and potassium compounds. They're all in the first column. All alkali metals are soluble. 
Same thing with these, because naturally they're soluble. When you mix and match them, will they all be soluble or will there be a precipitate? I think you're going to find a precipitate often. So that's all there is to it. Um, so your hypothesis, guys, we want to try to make a hypothesis that seems pretty genuine. And so looking at the compounds we have before we get started, if you can kind of predict, maybe write in here in pencil, I mean, you can erase it, where do you expect precipitate to happen? If any. Um, if you're not sure, you can put a question mark, just be honest. And then, if it really happens, so that would be your hypothesis, you can say, I expect when the, you know, it would be kind of a complex hypothesis, but that's what a hypothesis should be, is what you expect to happen. Because that's what scientists did, they mixed compounds together, they found the precipitate, and they tried to figure out why, after a while they realized, these compounds usually form precipitates, these usually don't, or in some cases never do. And that's what those, it is very pragmatic, very, you know, put it into practice and see what happens, that's how these solubility rules came about. I just want to thank you for this, this group. They're all good students. They uh, care about you, care about uh, learning, and we just pray that the labs we do in this class will help us to understand better. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're doing this lab, lab five. Um, next week we'll learn about the background of oxidation and reduction. And uh, I'm not going to decide. If I want to try to introduce oxidation reduction uh, complex balancing because it's not easy and I don't want to blow you guys away. But once you get the hang of it, it's just it's one of those complex processes that's very easy to make a mistake in the middle of. The steps are predetermined. Do A and B and C and D. But it's so easy to make a little mistake and miscount. I mean, when I do it, you know, I make mistakes. So. So that's it. We're just doing the lab. Um, double re lab five double replacement reactions. Um, I don't think anything can do this week. We're going to do a lab report for this one. Now it says to email it to your teacher no more than midnight, maybe before, but you know, don't worry about that. Just give me the if you know you're not going to be here next week, does anybody know that? You know you're not going to be here then? Then email me your lab right. Otherwise, it just makes me print it out. If you can bring your print out copy of plastics you know, on Tuesday, then you know, I don't care. That's, that's what I want to work with. It's easy. I don't think any of us are going to do that one a.m. today before. Yeah. Well, well, no, it's got to be on the board, right? So, all I'm saying is. Uh, <laughs> So that's it. Go ahead and get started in your lab. You get everything over there. Uh, I'm trying to see if my chemistry is not good. It's supposed to be recording. I think it is. It is recording. He came in and that's what he did. Yes. Hello. How are you doing, Gavin? So, whichever group is over here, if you would turn this to so they can observe what you're doing. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm the cameraman. So it looks like um, if I were to tilt this down, would it go down? Yeah. I know, I feel like I'm going to break it. Um, okay. Oh. Does this like go down? I don't think it does. It should like... During last guys, it should be... Should it just tilt down or is it like... It should like... Mask up, up America. You know, and guys, just clean your hands yeah. afterwards with. I don't want to see. I can see his head. You can't see. You can't even see the, 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 the ground. Like I have to be so like if you do this. This. So, oh wow. Change it, and I don't so want to break. I know. I don't want to break. You just have to see a wall and listen to us. I guess you know. like took it off the box. Uh, we'll see. Joshua, your head is more very pronounced. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Say hi, y'all. Hello. Hi, y'all. <laughs> y'all, we're so sorry. <laughs> okay, I think okay. that's all. Maybe. Oh, there, is that all of them? Wait, that's... 
Eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Bro, I saw that. I'm like, I'm gonna have to look for each and every single one of those, but it's just like, okay. Um, put three drops of NaCO3 into wells. One, two, three, four. So I think we have to do it like, you have to do it through like what, like this way, another one this way, another one this way. Oh, yeah, right. no, the first one it's like, oh, right. you yes. put it through oh, these right. wells, so you, yeah. drops there, but then like the other ones you'll actually just put in there, and then like, it's a different, is there like water in there? No? I'm pretty sure there's water in there. <laughs> so sanitary, here, we have a bunch of cotton, so let's just do it. Okay, does this go down? No, I don't want to press there nothing. There is some form of liquid in there. Oh wow, there's a lot of water in these. <laughs> See, I told you there's water in those. Well, Wait. I'm not the person that comes. That's what happens when I have to do this. Are you sure about that? No, I'm, yes, I am. See, I'd, rather, I'd like to do that for you camera people, but I'm not going to do that. I'm like a million cotton swaps. Okay, it's good. Take your time. We only got like 30 minutes. Hey, you know what? I'm going to test my hand. Okay, what's the first one? It's called copper no. nitrate, which is. Oh, that's calcium nitrate. Or calcium, whatever. Yeah, that one. This is copper. Dang. Who dried this? <laughs> this is like okay, so chock full of water. water. I think there's a bunch of these. It's okay. Imagine like being irresponsible and like not throwing away your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like fully in the room. So I got I got okay. the calcium nitrate. I just came out. Okay, no, that looks dry enough. It, it, it's fine, it's fine. That'll work. Fine. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Gotta get that. Oh, shoot. Okay, one. And then two. Oh, there's different. Six, seven, eight. Guys, the other ways to remember oxidation reduction is oil ring. Oxidation is losing electrons. Reduction is gain electrons. Okay. First one's done together, but either one Okay. Works. Now you gotta get this one. This is the copper. Wait, should I do the copper or do you guys want to do Sure, just do it, Emery. You got this, because Lord knows I'll mess it up. Yes, you will. Yeah, I was kind of talking to Josh, you will. <laughs> I'm not allowed to touch the chemicals. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> okay, um, what's that? It's nickel nitrate. Oh, that's zinc nitrate. Potassium oxalate. Nickel nitrate, okay. Are you on A2? I'm on C1. Come on. It's not a race it actually is. It's gender security. <laughs> okay, um, and then the zinc nitrate. Okay. D1 through D4. Okay. Uno, dos, tres. Cuatro, cinco, siete. Cinco, ocho, nueve. Yes. Oh, I forget. So <laughs> it's so It's and sucking on my. Dosen, torse, torse. No, that's that's fourteen. Oh, okay. So on set, dosen, torse, torse. Oh, there we go. I got it. Okay. Oh, good. Um, that's like where we so now I gotta do three drops of Ki. What's Ki? Oh, tosium. Does somebody else want to do this, or you want? It? Okay. 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 The three drops into those wells through one through four. Okay. I see you. I see you. Well, I'm just you're gonna like catch on fire. And hold your head back, you know. <laughs> the flames. Or the fumes. One, two, three. Oh, it's, it turned yellow. Wait, did you do more than three? Yes. No, I didn't. I never. Dang. So that looks very yellowy. <laughs> okay, um, KOH, which is hydroxide. Done. 
What's the thing that's going to turn red? Okay, there is precipitation in C2. In C2, there's like what's congealed substance. Oh, okay, wow, that's cool. Okay, wait, I'm actually gonna label this like A, B, C, D. One, two, three, four. So it's like battleship. Ooh, I like it. Okay, A1 is nothing. A2. A3 is white. Um, so we can say there's stuff in A3 because it's a change in color. In A2, there was a change in color. A white uh, change. Yes. In um, A3, too. So, okay, wait. For this to be right, color or precipitate? Color is a chemical reaction of precipitate, and also a chemical reaction is just one form of two aqueous solutions and one form of aqueous solutions. Okay, so C and C. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. In all of these, in the two column, there's all precipitate. Okay. So this one. Even. Oh, yeah. Solid. Solid. And a color change, I think. Solid. Solid. There was absolutely nothing in A4. Okay, so it's going to be dark blue. Was the light green? Precipitation in B1. Hold up. Yeah, there was a yeah, because it should cover. I think D2 is what you expected to happen. You guys went through your, your work uh, book and predicted there was a precipitation A would give you a precipitate, right? Okay, now I'm going to do the A ones. Wait, there was precipitate in A1? B1. B1. Oh, yeah. There is nothing in A1. Yeah, there was nothing in A1. Okay, B2 is like dark yellow. That was A2. Yellow. Um, I think that I think the C columns are all slightly green. In B1, there's nothing. All the coronavirus, get your head out of my face. Yeah, there's nothing in A1 or D1. D1 had... Light Slight green. color. Light green. Light green. Light green. Light green. Light green. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so... A3 is milk. Yeah. I just called it white. Yeah. <laughs> it is white. Wait, what? I think there was precipitation. Okay, so that's like cyan blue. Think. There was precipitation in nature. Um, oh, there was, yeah, like, if you look at the bottom, oh, okay, there's like a change of color towards the bottom. What's that red? Okay, so light blue, light green again. So I'm just gonna say light green. Is this so messed This is so small, I can't read my handwriting. That's like a light bluish green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool yeah, yeah, yeah. color. <laughs> I got Whoa, there's precipitate on the bottom of D B1. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and... Wow. There's nothing else. 
empathy, light green, and a wait, light green and C three. Light green C eight. C light green C eight. C three. C three. Sorry. And then that okay, D four is nothing. There's like nothing in any of the four. D four, D three, or D imagine one. Then in D two, there's something. Yeah, there's no precipitate in any of them. In D two, there's a little bit of color. D two. Yeah. Is there precipitate in D two? Oh yes, yeah, there is. Yeah. All the two, all the two column has precipitate, but four column has absolutely nothing. Okay. And a light blue. Is that what we said? Oh, it looks like it. So for our camera people, we have the please stuff. <laughs> Hello camera people. Hi Gavin. What's up Gavin? <laughs> so that's the stuff. And then I wrote, oh wait, I gotta get my flower from another way. Okay. So, so the <laughs> That is the stuff. There you go. I couldn't get the thing that's held down, so that's okay. I was kind of like, We'll take it off the box. And then I think if I, uh... Yeah, see there. Oh, you just do that? Okay, so yeah. I figured it's something like that. Let's try the lead and we'll chemical reaction. Let's see here. Oh, that's a little too tilted. Oh, there wasn't anything in a... We're now we're kind of done. Let's probably lay that down there. D3, there wasn't anything. Let's try... One thing we could try... That's way to do it. Oh, there was a chemical reaction in C4. There was only in C4. Oh, innovation that exists. Guys, I have a brilliant idea. Let me see this. Okay, here's the press room. Okay, I'm gonna go get my book. And I'll tell you what, I will let you adjust the camera as you want to yeah, uh, sure. to catch the experiment. So, and since we're doing this, let's, let's move this back a little. Let's see if it tilted down any further. Here's the best way to tell. No, so it's there not. There actually was. was. Yes, but it, okay, there. See, you can see the white background, so there was a change of color in these two. Yeah, but the but the, but this is white too. <laughs> exactly, it's Wait, white. So which, see, in in V B four and C four. Yeah, there was a light. Right, you know, you blue can see and C four. Oh, I know. It. Yeah, you're right. You can yeah, see it yeah, for sure. You're right. No I'm kidding. All right, so there's a light blue in that. Dog on it. I wrote in pen. <laughs> uh, let's see. C one. That was very impressive. So wait, what are we calling these colors? Okay. Uh, see, I did light blue, like, oh, look at this yeah, yeah. over there. But then, like, if these ones... Oh, so what do you expect? And the key thing you're looking for is the... Oh, there is precipitation. Uh, the so color change, but... This A3. is the copper iodine. Yes, I did. Yeah. What color is it? Imagine I'm trying to watch this from home. You know, I might just watch this and just see how our science experiments are going. Uh, I'm very sorry to whoever watches this. We are yeah, because you're not even showing them the stuff. Right? Oh, there it is. Be Observe. Be amazed. Do they even do this experiment with that? Like, do they fill the stuff out too? I think so. Oh, I am so sorry. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, if you can pause it, pause it from here, copy paste. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cite me. <laughs> Emory Williams, he's a reliable source. Right, it's my textbook and Emory. <laughs> okay. Now we're supposed to clean the reaction plate immediately. Immediately? Oh. It may be difficult to clean if you wait. <laughs> okay, now I have to separate the paper. Balance chemical equations for each double replacement reaction that occurs. Crap. This is not going to go well. Well, it was nice knowing y'all. <laughs> I'm about to finish the last So, what would be like the best way to break why there was a reaction? Okay. Um, okay. 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 It has to do with. There would be a reaction, you just can't see a precipitate. In some cases, not. I don't like the book says there's no reaction. Yeah. The reason they're saying that is everything breaks down the ions, they're all mixed together. But there is a reaction. Uh, but yeah. you can see it if there's a solid or a gas. Gas puts on a solid form of liquid part. Okay. Um, so there's always a reaction going on. It's just, well, this is meaning that there's no But you can't tell. Just because you don't see a precipitate doesn't mean that there's no reaction. Oh, okay. That's what I'm saying. 
That makes more sense. Yes. Yeah. Um. Oxalate. 
So I know I got some C2. Yeah, I don't see C204 at all. It's not commonly used. You don't normally need to know oxalates. Oh, there it is, oxalate. Okay, well anyway, um, normally you don't talk about how soluble it is, I wasn't familiar with it. And uh, turns out that's the, the order it should be. You should write this down. It's the most soluble, this is solubility. Magnesium is great, except calcium, then cadmium, then zinc, and then these are not very soluble. Yes? The first question on here says, on a separate sheet of paper, write a balanced equation for each of the double replacement reactors. Um, we yes. have the first part, like the CIM3 um, to plus KI. How would we go from there? Okay. Um, like, do you just combine it? Do you it's double replacement, so they always exchange places. Potassium and calcium are going to exchange places. So potassium is not going to be combined with iodine anymore, but with nitrate. Okay. And if you know that calcium is plus two charge, nitrate has minus one. Um, it's going to be like that. And then potassium now bonds with nitrate. What am I doing? I'm writing the same thing now. This should be potassium here. And calcium was combined with nitrogen, now it's combined with iodine. That's so, uh, calcium, this is going to be soluble because of the nitrate. This, I don't know. Calcium is sometimes soluble. Uh, I don't know what the iodide it is. You'll find out in the lab what happens here. That's all you do, you switch the places uh, in any, any of these reactions. If you have the oxalate, uh, let's take nickel nitrate, I think it's two here. Let's take the oxalate. Can't tell, but that's one thing. Oxalate. And now it's going to go, and they're going to switch places. Sodium's going to bond with this, and nickel's going to bond with that. So if I take the first one, nickel, you can tell it has a plus two charge, and each one of these is minus one, and there's two of them. So this has plus two. c 4 is two minus. This is one minus. This is two plus. This is one plus. So nickel is two positive, C204 is two minus, so you just need one of each. And then with sodium nitrate, you're going to have two of them, because you have two here, you have two there. And each sodium has plus one, nitrate has minus one. Both of these are soluble, so you know this is going to be aqueous. This, we don't know. The oxalate is not that soluble with nickel, so we expect there to be a precipitate here. That's what we expect. See if that happens in the lab. But that's how you do double replacement. They take place and switch places. It can be confusing sometimes because there's no parentheses around this because you only had one of them. And there would be no parentheses around that. You just need to become familiar with what's called polyatomic ion. And they just switch places. The metal is always as at first the non-metal or the polyatomic ion, which is almost always the non-metal itself. Almost always, but not always. There are some exceptions, at least one exception. Uh, NH4 is an exception. Ammonium is called. So anyway, okay, that breathe, makes sense. that's what I really mean. This really does help to breathe when you're talking with these things. It's kind of messy, it makes me perspire everything. I can breathe. So this 
switch places. You got the positive and the negative, the positive and the negative, they switch places. It's like two people dancing, they switch partners. That's what double replacement is. Single replacement, you might have this plus just Na. And then it kicks out nickel and takes its place with the nitrate. So what you want to do in the last write up is I was hoping you guys would try to predict what would happen and see what really happens. Um, so you should write what's going to happen. As you can see, there's 16 different reactions from this table, right? Mm -hmm. So it's good practice doing this, I think. Does that help? Yes. What time do we have? We got, well, we're early, right? What's that for? 11.13, we go to 11.40, I think. Um, so do you have any more time on this to do in the lab? Are you finished? Yeah. Well, actually, clean everything up, put it away. Um, I've got a couple of speakers. I want to make sure everyone has at least one of these beakers here. Could you squish another beaker and see if you can fit that in there somewhere? Sure, okay, I'll try. I know it's hard to get these all in the And, uh... Well, we have, like, another one. I love what you laugh so much, but the introduction be my speech. Similar. 
Okay, it's the same thing. Um, you got elements oxidized and reduced. There's certain you just need to know about certain elements, what's called their oxidation number, based on the column. Get up to your periodic table, based on the column and the periodic table it's in. So, if it's in column one, it always has an oxidation number of plus one. If it's in column two, it always has an oxidation number of plus two. And if it's in column seven A, I mean it's almost all the way over. Uh, if it's over here, it's going to be minus one. Uh, now these are usually minus two, but it depends. So those are called oxidation numbers. It means when it breaks down, what kind of ion, when it forms a compound, which one is giving up electrons more compared to an oversharing compared to which ones are uh, receiving electrons. Okay, um, so we have, I think the other one might be better. We remember that, I think it was bigger anyway. It's the same thing, isn't it? I, I probably modified it a little bit. Magnesium, what kind of reaction is this? It is a Double replacement. It's not double. Oh, it's a single replacement. Right. Because, yes. Magnesium chloride plus, and then what's left over? Hydrogen. Hydrogen got kicked out. And I don't know if that's balanced. It looks like it is. Good. Yeah. Now, the priority is fluorine. We don't we have oxidation numbers on this. I have one that has oxidation numbers. But I should probably uh, get one. Where's my uh, sheet that goes back here? Chemistry, yeah, okay. I think I have one of the oxidation numbers from here. Maybe I don't. Oh well. Okay, I don't. Well, that's all right. Um, if you look at the periodic table, okay? Uh, let's see, I can find the periodic oxidation numbers. Let me pull that up. Uh, I know I have one somewhere. Um, So this is one that we want to see if we can magnify. Can you read that? Uh, can you see those one? Yeah, you can. Good. Okay, the most electronegative it varies from four down to less than one. And you can see the least negative negative is fractionated. So the highest here, the lowest there. What's number one in electronegativity? In electro fluorine. Fluorine at 4.0. What's 3.5, the second highest? That would be It's oxygen. oxygen, not necessarily what you would expect. And then you got a couple that are, that are 3.0. Hydrogen and fluorine. Not hydrogen. Uh, oh, um, chlorine and hydrogen. hydrogen. Sorry, it looks like an H. But yeah, like that. it's too far away. It's hard to see. And then it goes down from that. Okay, so if you got a higher electron activity, that means you grab on electrons stronger than the other substance. So if you have covalent bonds, you're sharing. But I'm we would be sharing, but we're not sharing equally. I want more of those electrons. Uh, so that's where electron activity that comes in to help you figure out. Um, so, all right. So go back to this. Is that the? I think I wanted another one that is there uh, behind it. Where is it? There it is. Okay. So, um, 
Let me just show you the answer here. We'll, the top one there. Okay. Magnesium is oxidized. Okay. And hydrogen is reduced. Well, how can we tell this? Say, the oil rig, which is probably easier. I, I learned the the line. Magnesium here doesn't have a charge. You don't see any plus two or anything up here, so it has no charge. Uh, chlorine is going to be negative one. And there's two of them. So magnesium has to go, must be two positive. So it goes from having electrons. Now it doesn't have electrons. It lost a couple of electrons. Oxidation is losing. And you know what it says here? Magnesium is oxidized. The re way you can tell is, it didn't have a charge here, but when it's bonded with this guy, what happened is chlorine mainly takes control of electrons. And this is an ionic bond. So magnesium is giving up those electrons. That gives it uh, a positive charge. Chlorine's accepted and gives it a negative charge, opposite charge to track. And that's what happens in ionic bonds. The key is to know that chlorine is one of the higher electronegativity elements. And you know when you have a metal and a non-metal, the metal is going to give up electrons, the non-metal is going to accept them. If it gives up electrons, if it's losing electrons, it's being oxidized. So metals in general are oxidized. And the non-metals are reduced. Uh, but hydrogen is kind of different. It can act like a non-metal or a metal. What is it acting like here when it bonds with chlorine? It's acting like a metal. Chlorine has electronegativity of three. Uh, if I pull up that other, up the periodic table, you can see oxygen, hydrogen, I think it's 2.1 or something like that. Can you see up there? Uh, so you took cursor off the image. Well, that didn't do it. What did I just do? Wait, you clicked on the image, so we don't have the image. Oh, ask for a new one? I think you just click on the thing and it's going to There. Uh, you can see it's 1. It's 2.1. I don't see it. It is 2.1. So, this one's more like that than this. So this, because this is negative 1 charge, this one ends up with a positive one charge. That's like a metal. When it bonds with metals, hydrogen takes a negative charge, but it usually has a positive 1 charge. So this has a positive one charge, this has a positive two charge. So what's happening is the magnesium is losing electrons. Here it went from plus one charge to no charge. So it gained electrons to, to make it not have a positive charge. So reduction is gained electrons. So can you see when you look at this that magnesium is being oxidized and hydrogen is being reduced. You're looking at two metals which would be an oxide which would be reduced, usually when, when that happens in most reactions that are oxidation reduction. You're comparing two metals. One of them, even though it's a metal, it's kind of being reduced, being forced to uh, gain electrons. Right? Metals don't like to do that. They give up electrons. Hydrogen acting like a metal there. So let's uh, go back. We'll put the make this one clear. Let's take a look and see if we can predict what's happening in the second one. V2 is a metal, you not, may not really comment with that one, so let's go down to this one instead. Now here, manganate. What's happening in manganate? All right, erase that and put that one up. That's a good one to look at. It's kind of messy. Um, where did I... So, uh, magnate, 2KMnO4 plus 5KNO2 uh, plus, now this is the kind of reaction, you don't know what to call it, it's just, all you can say it's an oxidation reduction reaction. We don't even know how to identify it. One of these is not easy to balance. So complex process. I'm gonna run out of room here. It's a lot of stuff. So now this gets kind of messy. 
you don't know is that manganese or potassium or hydrogen can all be oxidized or reduced. Let's just look at MnO4. Oxygen is very electronegative. The only thing more electronegative than oxygen is fluorine. So it's going to determine what's what. What column is oxygen in? Okay, so one, it needs one electron to fill inside the shell, it needs two. So it's going to gain two electrons, giving it a negative two charge. So oxygen almost always has a, a negative two charge. How many of are there? Negative eight. So guess what charge manganese is going to take on here? Well, it depends. The manganese, there's two potassium, one of these has a negative two charge. So what do I need to add to manganese to change it from negative 8 to negative 2? Plus 4? Plus 6, right? Oh, my bad. <laughs> but you're thinking the right way. And so oxygen is almost always in charge. The only time oxygen doesn't have a negative 2 charge, almost the only time, H2O2 hydrogen peroxide has a negative 1 charge, but almost always, it's negative two, except for when it bonds with fluorine, which almost never happens. So you can almost always assume that it's negative two. Um, take a look at what happens here in NO2. Just out of, out of curiosity. Two of these, each one negative two, right, for oxygen. Overall, this has a charge of minus one, so what is not going to need to be what? Plus negative four adds up to negative one. Plus three. So nitrogen has a positive three. Okay. Now, you don't need to worry. Is that NO2 or NO3? Oh, that is NO2 and NO3. They're both. How about over here? This is NO3. Negative two times three is negative six. This whole thing has a negative one charge, so nitrogen has to be positive five. So what has happened to nitrogen? It's gone from posi 3 to posi 5. What's happened to it? Has it lost or gained electrons? Okay. It's gone from posi 3 to posi 5. It's gained two electrons to neutralize two of the positive charges. Yeah. It, did I say gain? It lost electrons. You said gain, right? I said gain first. It lose electrons. It goes up. It goes from plus 3 to plus 5. So nitrogen lose electrons. When you say the oil rig, I like Leo, it's being oxidized. Nitrogen is being oxidized. So that was what trade was that three. So that's how you can tell down here. Nitrogen is oxidized. Let's go back and see if we can figure out how what's happening, what form is being reduced. And I know this can be kind of messy because you got NO2 here, NO3, be careful there. They're two polytonic ions. You've got to figure out what's happening in each case. Now, it could be manganese, it could be potassium. Potassium is going to stay. It always has plus one. It's plus one. It's plus one everywhere. So it's not being oxidized or reduced. It just kind of stays the way it is. It's always plus one. So maybe manganese is something to be happening. So over here, we said it's plus six. Let's see what happens over here with manganese. I suspect manganese because I know when you see the alkali metals, they don't get oxidized reduced for the general. So manganese here, MnO4 here, and then SO4. So this one, we said manganese plus six. SO4 is negative two. Look at your periodic tables for, and on the back of these, I gave you the charges that we take that we have. That means that manganese here must be positive two. What happened to manganese? It went from plus six to plus two. Did it gain electrons or lose electrons? And I do GER. You can say oil red. Reduction is gaining and oxidation is losing oil, but I just deal with the GER. So I'm saying manganese is being reduced. Let's see if that's what happens in it. Magnesium is reduced. It says magnesium is reduced. That's wrong because there is no magnesium. That should say that's a typo. 
Is there magnesium in here? No, I don't believe I did that. Manganese is reduced. Huh. You say magnesium, I say manganese. Did you ever? Years ago, there was a young singer who her agent said, got a, a gig for you to go to England. You go around, you're going to sing some songs, you know, for them. And, you know, so she thought this was pretty cool, gives them a variety of chance to go to London. So, you know, the song says, you say potato, I say potato. You say tomato, I say tomato, potato. Let's, you know, so, so she doesn't know they're pronounced differently. She gets up and says, you say potato, I say potato. You say tomato, I say tomato. Potato, potato. And everybody <laughs> starts laughing at the crowd. She has no idea what's going on. So, anyway. That would be super hard. Embarrassing if you were yeah. in that position. All right. I, I actually read that and read that this years ago, so you know how. So wait a minute. Manganese is reduced. I know this gets kind of messy, and there's a lot of things we haven't talked about, so I'm sorry to overwhelm you, but there are, next week we're going to be doing an oxidation reduction reaction. And in an oxidation reduction reaction, something is oxidized and something else is reduced. So let's see, let's look at that. Uh, why don't we just take one of the reactions from that. Remember, oil grade or leolyme goes GER, uh, Um, Leo, so losing electrons means oxidize, gain electrons means reduce. Reduction. So if you look on page here, that looks on page 34, 35, it shows the reaction. And this is a simple one. I mean, it's pretty straightforward, it's not as complex. Plus, copper. Nitrate, and that must be aqueous because of the nitrate I know, goes to copper solid plus NiNO3 aqueous. And I know it's probably two here somewhere. Whoops, this is nickel. So there's two of them, not sodium. So, Now, let's figure out what's happening to these. What's going to happen in this case is going to be these ones. We want to figure out which one's been oxidized, which one's been reduced. Because nitrate, nitrate, it's not a nitride, a nitrate, or it could be happening. This one has a charge of zero. Over here, since nitrate is minus one, this is plus one. This one has a charge of plus two because there's two of the nitrates, each one minus one, right? And there's times two, so it's minus two for these two nitrates. So this has positive two. Here it's zero. What did nickel do? Went from zero to plus one. It lost electrons. So it's been oxidized. Copper went from uh, Plus, well, this we said from zero to plus one, so it lost an electron. Copper went from plus two to zero, so it gained electrons. It's been reduced. Does that make sense? And that's the idea. What's being oxidized, what's being reduced, you can tell from this. Um, but you can see they get a lot messier than simple ones like that. Yeah. They get a lot messier. Here in this place you can see vanadium oxygen is negative two. There's three of them means negative six. There's only two vanadium, so two times plus three is positive six. So you figure out vanadium must be plus three. Over here, similarly, oxygen is negative two, so vanadium must be plus two. For vanadium to go to plus three to plus two, it gained an electron, right? So vanadium is reduced. GER, gaining electrons is reduction. That's how you figure this out. Here it's zero. Any element by itself is zero. Over here, oxygen, there's three of them. Each one minus two, that's a total of minus six. So
So 2 times what is plus 6? Well, 2 times positive 3. So R went from 0 to plus 3. If it has a positive charge, it lost electrons, and losing electrons is oxidation. So iron has been oxidized. I know it gets kind of messy. And I've shown you electronegativity. I guess you don't really need electronegativity and all of this to do it. But you do comes into play when you get into oxidation reduction. Really complex. These are unbelievably hard, some of them, to do. Because you may not know that there's water over here or what some all the compounds may not be given to you yet. So it gets pretty messy. But that's the way you think. You can see there's, they reasoned out knowing, see the Cr2O7? But over here we have Cr separate, broken out from, so it broke away from oxygen. So that may be a hint that, you know what, maybe it's being oxidized or reduced. Since there's seven oxygens, and seven times negative two is negative 14, two times positive six is plus 12, this whole thing, the chromate, is negative two. So that's why it was plus six, not plus seven, because it's negative two. But you can figure that out, even without the table that shows you the polyatomic ions. Potassium is plus one, there's two of them, so that's plus two. So this whole chromate must be negative 2. So that's how to figure out chromate here was plus 6. Chromium was plus 6. Over here, chlorine is 91, so chromium must be plus 3. It went from plus 6 to plus 3. It gained electrons. Gained electrons is reduction. Kind of messy, I know. <laughs> yeah. But that's what you want to do next week in, when we're learning this. We'll talk more about it. Uh, enough of that. We're done. So, I know it seems kind of messy, but what you work with this more over time, it becomes second nature. So, I don't care whether you can use uh, oil rig or uh, 